Well, good afternoon. I'm very proud to have a talk here about the current state of the GR framework. Maybe you remember uh, last year I've already introduced it in a short lightning talk. And so I want to give a short recap now. What are the basic ideas behind GR? It's a procedural graphics backend, which is completely written in C and C++. So it's capable of presentate to, uh, to pre present uh, continuous data streams because the performance is uh, really good. And the main idea, one of the main ideas is we want to, uh, to, to support both two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics with one package. Uh, also, we don't only focus on Julia or C, we also uh, provide our, our software for, for, for Python, for different Python versions. And one major, major point is that we also want to, uh, want to uh, realize interoperability for, for different graf uh, graphical user interfaces like WX widgets or QT and all these things to have a better user interaction. And uh, last year, or, or I already introduced that GR can be used as a backend for Matplotlib, Matplotlib which uh, would, uh, can speed up uh, the performance of Matplotlib. And uh, the same applies to Julia, where uh, Tom has uh, uh, written his plot as uh, uh, software, which uh, uses PyPlot as a backend, as a primary backend. And for the most uh, applications uh, with the GR framework, you will receive much higher uh, uh, display rates. Uh, especially if you produce output like PDF, uh, PN, uh, <coughs> SVG, and all these uh, things. So as uh, mentioned before, you can also mix two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics uh, with our software. I will. Uh, demonstrate this uh, in, in a demo later in this talk. Uh, one major feature is that you can produce video on the fly, movies on the fly. You don't have to change any line of your matplotlib code. You simply uh, export an environment variable which uh, advises the GR backend to produce a video instead of PNG output or display output. I will show this also. Uh, here you can see some typical examples and you see that there's really no difference between the output that's generated by Matplotlib and by the GR backend. The only difference is that it's much, much faster. Uh, in the meanwhile, I also have, as uh, promised last year, written a MATLAB-like uh, plot convenience layer, which uh, uses uh, output functions which are very similar to, to those uh, provided by MATLAB. And you see them here in the, in the, with a the yellow background. And uh, this demo shows that it's uh, really simple to write uh, MATLAB-like uh, procedures with Julia. You can use it for two-dimensional graphics, like in, in this uh, 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 nonlinear uh, FIT program, or you can use it for three-dimensional output. Uh, there's also a function, for example, to, to uh, display uh, ISO surfaces. And you see the resolution is quite good. And you can export this to WebGL or to, any, or to PDF or whatever you want to use. Uh, as mentioned before, one of the main features is that you can mix two-dimensional and three-dimensional scenes and create video contents on the fly. You see uh, three different parts here. There's first a part which uses the MATLAB-like plot layer. Then we have a part which uses uh, three-dimensional graphics. And we have a part which uh, uses the, the lower level functions of the GR framework. And with those functions, you can uh, create a histogram of some uh, atom positions which are displayed here in, uh, with the GR3 free framework, which is based on OpenGL. Uh, this is a very convenient way to mix uh, two-dimensional, three-dimensional graphics. In the meantime, there's also, it's also possible to, to mix GR with the Interact mo module with, for, for Julia. And I will show this later. Uh, you can use the manipulate uh, uh, macro to to change some parameters uh, for, for a three-dimensional plot. And in this manner, you can uh, rotate or 
uh, change the tilt of your, of your three-dimensional scene. It's a very convenient way to use uh, our graphics software in the browser. Uh, then you can use the GR frameworks with uh, graphical user interfaces. For Julia, we currently only support uh, GTK, uh, JDK because, there's, uh, as I know, there's no Qt backend right now. Uh, I have heard that there will be some, some uh, approach in the future. And uh, you see that you can use all these functions in a very uh, simple way. Uh, as mentioned by Tom, I have written a backend for his Plot S uh, software, which seems to be very popular if you look in at uh, the download uh, rates. And uh, you can invoke the GR backend in the same way than the other backends. And, uh, I think we are doing, uh, it's already running pretty well. There are some issues yet, but uh, I think we will solve them in the near future. future. I'm very excited about that. Uh, the performance is, uh, I think, good. Uh, I don't know whether you uh, mentioned it in your, in your tutorial, but uh, normally you have much uh, higher uh, display rates than with, with plot S or uh, with uh, PyPlot or with other backends. Uh, another possibility is to use uh, GR in, in, a, in a development environment like Atom, uh, in this case, like Ju in, in, in Juno. You, you know, you can uh, uh, use inline graphics, and this makes uh, uh, creating graphics scripts uh, much easier. So at this point, I would like uh, to demonstrate some things here and to show you some notebooks. So is this big enough here? Yeah, okay. Okay, here you can see uh, an example which creates a movie on the fly. Uh, it takes some while to uh, until this loop here has passed. And once it's, it has have finished, you can uh, rotate the output uh, with WebGL here. Uh, in a future version, we will use a much faster uh, rendering library for the 3D part, which is currently in, under development. I will show this later. Um, oops, I'm running out of time here. <laughs> There's another example which shows. how to interact. We have seen it in, as, a, as a movie already in the slides. But here you can see that it's, uh, it, you can really rotate it in the browser in real time, and it's pretty fast. OK, then there's some demo. Oops. It's a little bit more complicated. It shows an ISO surface. It's an example which has been uh, written for Python. And I would migrated this uh, code to Julia. And once uh, the movie is uh, created, it will be shown here in the browser. And you can export it uh, again as a WebGL and display it in your, on your website. Okay, and finally, do we have some time still? <laughs> okay, um, I think I'll skip the next demo because there's some stuff which might be more important. Uh, I want to talk about our current activities. Well, uh, we have some deployment pro uh, problems with Windows right now because only a subset of all this stuff I've shown just uh, now is, is supported in Windows. But we are close uh, to, to, to complete uh, Mingwe uh, implementation of all our stuff, which will be uh, ready for production, I think, in two, two weeks. Then you will have the full functionality of GR and Windows 2. Also, in general, we want to, to improve the deployment process uh, for all these packages and uh, do some more testing. Uh, 
we need uh, more MATLAB convenience functions and uh, also the, the plot S uh, backend has to be consolidated. There are still some parts of the code which uh, have, which could, could be much easier or faster. Then there's a project uh, where we have uh, transpiled our complete code into JavaScript. This would allow us to use the software completely in a browser without any uh, additional components. Also, and that's I think a very important point. We want to write a Qt backend, so we have one backend which is really uh, based on the same code uh, basis for all different platforms. Because Qt, uh, as I know, is the only uh, graphical user interface which is really portable uh, for Windows, uh, Mac OS, and and uh, uh, Linux systems. Another thing is that we want to improve our 3D support. There's already an ongoing project called EGS, which has been uh, introduced on the PyCon conference uh, two weeks ago. And this will be based on modern OpenGL, which will make it possible to not only to display about 10,000 of uh, atoms or, or, or vertices, but, but about millions uh, of vertices. And it can be extended by, by plugins and Again, it combines 2D uh, and three-dimensional graphics uh, with a very good performance. Uh, compared with, with uh, Simon's uh, GL Visualize, it uh, will also be, will be a little bit uh, different because we will export our graphics into our 2D system. So uh, it will, the, the, the rendering will be done in an in a off-screen off, off, uh, off uh, manner. Uh, so, this will be the future. We have uh, applications which need such graphics uh, output, uh, where we have uh, millions of, of uh, spheres which have to be rendered, and we hope that uh, in late autumn we can display such things with a GR framework. And uh, that is all I want to tell you right now, and maybe next year I have more information for you. Thank you for your attention. Yes. Um, view while rotating it, basically. Uh, an animated 3D view to have it recorded of the ISO surface, for example. Yes, yes. You can uh, change the ISO value with a slider, and this would then be rendered in real time. Okay. I'd like to know how you have time to support all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff to do. I think the most, the, the biggest problem we currently have is uh, simply the deployment. Although we have a lot of stuff written ourselves, we need some third-party stuff, and it makes things not very easy. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. If I understand correctly, you render 3D basically off-screen to a 2D buffer. Yes. Does this work across an X window client? Yes, it will. Okay, okay.